I'm Mark Melly from Box Farm, Vernon Dean, um, in the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty between Andover and Hungerford. Soils typically uh, clay with flint over chalk, chalky loams, and going down to some chalky gravelly valley bottoms, and quite prone to summer drought. We have 300 owned acres in, a rota in an arable rotation, all organically managed, with three years grass and clover, followed by spelt, winter oats, stubble turnips, and spring barley, which is undersown and takes us back to grass. And the, the mixtures we've been using from Cotswold Seas over the years are largely based on the, of the Cholderton mixture, sometimes specially adapted without red clover, and for the first time this year, we've got a, a herbal lay and we're standing now in one of the, the simplified version of the herbal lay, um, which is being mob stocked and rotationally grazed in its first season. So we established the herbal lay last year by under sowing in, in spring barley. Um, it's not a 100% successful technique and every year you couldn't guarantee it, but we've been using it consistently for the last 30 years. And by far the most times we get a success and this year was an outstanding success. So good establishment. The, the concept of the diverse lay and mob stocking um, being good for soil structure, drought resistance and obviously fertility building in an organic situation is critical to us. Um, and the, the mob stocking, although it involves a bit more management, is an experiment which I think was one we'll be following and it, it seems to produce more forage and, and maybe be the way to go in the future. The, this block of 20 odd acres has been divided into, into four grazing paddocks and we started off with ewes, well, pregnant ewes turned out to lamb in April um, at a rate of about two an acre and they weren't, there was enough grass then for them not to be having any supplementary feeding. Obviously with their lambs at foot, the stocking rate has gone up, but we've had to bring in more sheep to get on top of it because the growth rate has been really good once it's started raining in May. And so in addition to the 50 odd sheep that have been in here, we brought in another 100 which have, which have been through and been out again. Um, and we've still got enough grass in one of the paddocks to make silage. The decision to make silage in the herbal lay is based very much on, on how much grass there is in front of the the ewes for their next block and we took the view that that there was so much in the next but one paddock if you like that we could we could miss a paddock out in the rotation and that'll be cut that's coincided with us doing main cut silage on the on the other lays and uh, the contractor will be here so it's nice and easy we'll fit it in this week given the success of the herbal lays this year i think we'll have more of them and in fact we've under sown another 25 acres which will be ready for use next year and it may well be that we, we're making more and more use of them to coincide with the options under countryside stewardship um, because obviously we have to look at other income streams than pure farming going forward. But they seem to be adaptable enough and resistant enough to the variations in climate that um, I think they've got a future here. This is a field of an adapted Cholderton mixture with no red clover um, and more small and medium leaf white clovers for grazing. But it has got the Timothy and Coxfoot in it, which we're looking for for drought resistance and early bite. It's been con pretty much continuously grazed since turnout in April. It's due for a bit of a rest. You will see that the Coxfoot, the same Coxfoot that gives us the early bite, is also running to head a bit at this stage. Um, you can't have one without the other, really. Managing Coxfoot is a bit of a challenge, but the, the benefits of that early grazing and then the drought resistance later in the summer are critical on this sort of soil type. This is the, the traditional or normal Cholderton mixture with the red clover in year three. And having been grazed, cut in the two previous years twice and then grazed with ewes and lambs this spring at a rate of about four ewes an acre until only three weeks ago. Um, and it, We've shut it up now to take a cut of silage. You can still see the red clover, the coxfoot, which has gone to head, but any compromise in the quality by the seeding of the coxfoot will be mediated by the amount of clover in the bottom there. On the farm, we run a flock of 400 breeding ewes and have 85 suckler cows taking all their offspring through to finishing. So at any one time, we've got 250 odd head of cattle on the place. And the, the silage that we make in part of the rotation and the grazing in the rotation here also has to feed 
the stock that are on rented areas of permanent pasture off the farm which come back here for the winter. So after three years fertility building of grass and clover, either cut or grazed, then we follow that with winter cereal which is normally spelt, which is what we're standing in here, then winter oats, stubble turnips, spring barley under sown, back to grass. And we would normally hope that the spelt will yield on an organic regime somewhere in excess of one and a half heading towards two tonnes an acre in, its, in that first year. So this is a field of an adapted Cholderton mixture with no red clover but an increased percentage of large and medium leaf white clovers. Um, we don't want too much red clover in the, on the farm in the autumn or we haven't got anywhere to flush the ewes basically. And we're cutting it for silage today. It was under sown last spring and this, so this is our first utilisation of it and it will go make the, the bulk of the silage for our suckler cows through the winter or, and the fattening cattle. Although the ryegrass is headed and some of the coxfoot has as well, with this amount of clover in the bottom, I think it'll give us a good levels of protein and digestibility which will more than offset the, the stemminess of the ryegrass which has given us the bulk um, and the increase in yield. So, at this stage of, of cutting, the silage analysis would typically give us an ME metabolizable energy of about 10.5%, um, which is more than enough for fattening our cattle with a little bit of supplementary barley and, and decent protein levels as well. I think we've been probably looking at a, at, a, at a silage yield typically in the range of 10 to 15 bales an acre. This is probably in excess of 12, I would think, but we won't really know until the bailers here.